good morning, waterfall. I'm currently camped in the Frenchman Coulee area of central Washington. It got cold last night. It got down to about 28 degrees. But this setup with my diesel heater kept me fairly comfortable all night long. Let me show you how I built it. I watched a lot of YouTube videos on overlanding when I was researching this project. And one of the coolest things I saw were these tire steps as a base. So that's what I decided to go with. One of the first things I noticed was that these tire steppers are not designed for a narrow trailer tire. That is an easy solution. You just need to drill a 5 16 inch hole one inch closer than the most narrowest setting. And don't forget to start with a pilot hole to make that hole true. We're going to make sure that the heater is centered on the step. So I'm right about three inches here. And I'm right about three inches there. So it looks pretty good. And I'll mark my holes. This drill bit is a 5 16 In order to figure out where the exhaust pipe will go through the step, I used a deep socket 24 millimeter that fits perfectly into the exhaust port and then rests nicely on the step. And then I just used a gray Sharpie to circle that out. Every hole saw has a small drill bit in the center that acts as a pilot hole. So I start with that to identify the center and then once I have the center identified, I use a 5 16 inch drill bit and drill through that center. That helps keep that uh, hole saw from moving as I'm cutting. This is a lot of work for that hole saw. It is cutting through steel, so I do use a little bit of 3-in-1 oil. That will cool the drill bit as it's going through the steel, but it will also cause a little bit of smoking. So please wear your mask and keep your garage ventilated. Once the hole is cut, we need to get rid of the burrs, and then we need to finish it off with a little bit of spray paint because it is steel and it will rust and it is going to live outside. So I secure the Vivor heater to the step using four stainless steel washers and nuts because I don't want them to rust. And they are 5 16 inch in diameter by 3 quarter inch long. And you'll see uh, that I mount them with the wing nuts down. Since I'm going to be wiring this thing directly to the RV battery box, I don't want to have to disassemble that waterproof box every time I want to go boondocking. Uh, this is the solution I came up with. I found this on Amazon. It's a waterproof connection consisting of 12 gauge wire. And what makes it waterproof is this male female threaded connection, but more importantly, the O-ring that's on the female side. My plan is to take the mail and have it uh, wired directly to the box, ready to go. Because it's going to be wired directly to the box, I need to protect these two terminals from corrosion. I definitely uh, don't want any water to get in here and cause corrosion, and absolutely do not want the very small possibility of something coming in contact with these two terminals and causing a spark because it just happens that the RV batteries live right next to the propane system, and that would be a bad day. Uh, it took me a while to come up with a solution for this, but thanks to my local hardware store, Ace, uh, the solution is an inch and a quarter furniture tip. So this thing's designed to go on the end of a stool or the end of a chair, and it's designed to protect your floors but it just so happens to be the perfect fit to protect these terminals. And when you pair it with an O-ring size 116 and some dielectric gel, it becomes a waterproof connection. So in order to grease this O-ring, I just place a small amount of dielectric gel on my finger and then I make sure that I coat the entire O-ring in it. I place that inside the furniture tip, and this becomes a waterproof connection. And trust me, I tested this thing. We had an incredibly rainy 
December, it rained for two weeks solid, and I did not get one drop of water inside of this cap. And when I took the RV on a road trip, 400 miles north up into central Washington, uh, the cap did not fall off. So that's my solution. Uh, I'll show you how I wired it up to the battery box. For those of you that don't know basic 12 volt wiring, I'll walk through it. And for those guys that do, uh, don't worry, I'll only do it in this section. So we're gonna strip off a little bit of plastic on each end that we are going to connect up. And we're gonna put a little bit of dielectric gel into what's called a butt connector in my hand. And those things are color coded. So yellow is the correct color for 12 gauge wire. And then I'm just gonna smash down the little metal barrel inside the butt connector with that tool in my hand. And of course, I'm gonna check for tightness to make sure that it works. Uh, red is the correct color for positive in a 12 volt DC system. I didn't have any red wire. I did have some white wire. So I used a label maker to identify that as the positive. Uh, just a different way to identify. You know, instead of using red, I'm gonna use white with a label maker. After that, uh, we're gonna put some heat shrink on these butt connectors. And what that does is it's gonna make it into a water tight connection or at least a water resistant uh, connection. So these things will uh, shrink down kind of like a shrinky dink if you're old enough to know that reference uh, with a heat gun. So get a heat gun or a really good hairdryer and point it there and it will shrink down around the connectors. And you see how tight it gets. Now I need to wire up the connections to the battery, which is gonna be a ring connection. Again, I'm using yellow ones because that's the correct color for 12 gauge wire. And I will finish that off with some more heat shrink. I'll do that again to the negative that was not recorded, that part. And then I'm just simply gonna zip tie it up to the big negative battery cable that's attached to my RV. And that's the finished product bolted down to the RV batteries. I want to place the heater near my front door, but I know it's a pretty long distance to my power supply, which is the RV battery box. Uh, my wife there is helping me measure it. And it turns out it is 22 feet. 22. Let's see. So the question is, can I even wire something that long? Uh, in order to get that question answered, I need to know how many amps uh, this thing draws on startup as it's warming up its glow plug. So if I go to Vivor's website on the 8 kilowatt diesel heater, and I go all the way down to the question and answer phase, I see that somebody already asked the question and they answered it. And the answer is 8 amps on startup and 3 amps why it's running. With that information, I can go to a voltage drop calculator at calculator.net, and I can type in the information that I know. Uh, we're gonna run copper wire at 12 gauge on a 12 volt DC system with a single set of conductors, and I'm gonna go 22 feet with a max amp load of eight. And when I calculate that out, it says that I'm going to get a voltage drop of 4.66%. Is that acceptable? Well, if you look down at their website, it mentions that a 5% load or less is all right. So it is recommended that the voltage drop should be less than 5% under a fully loaded condition. 22 feet at 12 gauge wire is less than 5%. We can do it. So let's do it. So we're replacing the four foot 14 gauge cord from the Vivor heater with a 12 gauge 22 foot cord. Uh, in order to do that, I had to put in an inline fuse. Uh, the Vivor has a fork type fuse, which is gonna be blown at 25 amps. I chose to go with a 20 amp. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the tube type fuses, uh, this is what they look like. The ratings are written on the ends. Uh, so 20 amps, that should be a great safety margin, considering that 
it starts up at 8 amps and then runs continuously on 3. Uh, that's the system. We'll go ahead and loom it up. I'll show you a little trick on how to loom it up and then we'll wire it on the other end onto the heater. Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays. It is December when I'm working on this project. We're going to take our 10 millimeter box end wrench and wrap it through the wires. And then we're going to run it all the way through. And we put the box end wrench in the loom. And then we just simply run the box end wrench up the seam in the middle. Since the heater is going to be fixed and I'm going to walk 22 feet to my battery box to connect it up, I don't want to run the risk of pulling apart the butt connectors that are closest to this diesel heater. So what I did to protect that is a knot that the uh, climbing community out there would recognize, a Presix knot. Uh, it's a fun knot to learn. I don't want to make this video too long by going into knot tying, but uh, look it up. You're looking at the 12-inch rigid ducting that's supplied with the heater. I feel like most people throw this thing away, but I've got an idea on how to use it. So you'll see here I'm using a gray Sharpie and I'm marking at four and an eighth and then eight and a quarter. And then with my hacksaw, I'm going to saw it into three equal pieces. That piece will fit really nicely over the 16 foot three inch ducting that Amazon seems to recommend with the purchase of all these heaters. And then I'm going to use a pipe clamp to make sure that it is tight. This next section is going to involve cutting into plastic with a small power tool. Uh, so we need to think about safety, maybe even open up that garage door. Uh, what I'm cutting into there is the RV electrical port. Uh, this is where RVs obviously keep their 30 amp or 50 amp cord. And I'm cutting off the little fingers, little fingers kind of keep it centered in the hole. After I get the fingers cut off, I switch over to my sanding bit and I make that cut nice and smooth. And now you'll see that that rigid three inch ducting fits really nicely into that port. And that is how I'm gonna get the diesel heat into the RV through that port. Now for the fun part, the part that will definitely void your warranty if you don't own a 14 year old trailer like me and my wife do. So we know where the diesel heater is gonna live. And what I'm envisioning is the three inch pliable heat ducting coming out of there and then penetrating this wall somewhere probably right about there. And that's where I would mount the four inch electrical access point uh, that we've already modified. And then at the end, it's gonna end up right there right uh, so that is the factory propane heat duct and what i'm hoping is to put the diesel heater duct directly above it two ducts two sources of heat boondocking will happen okay we've opened up the cabinet and what i thought we were going to have to do is figure out how to work this way but when i looked at this keystone gave me an access point right there. So it looks like I just have to remove two screws. We'll just lay that flat. I decided to upgrade my heating duct to a four inch duct. So that is a four inch hole saw going through and it turns out it was pretty darn dull. Check it out, I bought a new hole saw. I'm about to put a hole in this perfectly good RV. I should have a new hole saw. So with my new hole saw, I started from the back of the cabinet and I'm just letting the pilot drill bit go through. Once I've done that, I go to a standard drill bit and drill through that little pilot hole just to confirm that that's exactly where I want to put the hole. And once I confirm it, I go for it. It's a weird feeling. Okay, if you're ever interested in what your trailer installation looks like, that's what the insulation looks like. Okay, just to repeat myself, because it's super important, I use two different types of hole saws on this project. I used uh, a three and a half for the electrical port because that was the correct diameter. 
You can even see the insulation from the RV still on the hole saw. And then the heat duct itself is a four inch hole. So. Once that's done, it's just a matter of using a pipe clamp to secure your four inch ducting. Drilling your pilot holes to mount the port. Don't forget to put some silicone on each screw. We don't want any water getting in the RV. I used a marine base sealant and she is going all the way around that port. Final step, we're gonna thread the other third of the factory tubing onto here. Clamp it down, set it up. Let's make some heat. There were four lessons that I learned when I took this thing out for its first trip. Lesson number one, the tire fenders kind of prevent the tire stepper from just simply going over the top of the tire like it was designed. Uh, the way I overcame this was I started at ground level and then rotated it up into position. Lesson number two, once that diesel heater gets up to temp, it will cause the ducting hose to elongate to all the way out and that will cause a dip and that caused me to get error code 05, which is an overheating error. I chopped 12 rings off the ducting and it fixed all the problems. And lesson number three, you gotta top off that diesel heater before you go to bed. When you're winter camping, it gets dark around 4.30 p.m. and you won't see the sun again until about 7.30 a.m. and that exceeds the 14 hour time limit I was getting off a full tank running at level six or level seven. Lesson number four. Okay, good things and bad things. Uh, we decided to add black duct tape to protect the pipe clamp and to make sure that we didn't get any heat escaping out the back end. Bad idea was we also added some aluminum ducting tape uh, to the end that would go directly to the RV. Uh, we thought this would make it uh, incredibly tight and prevent any leaks. And what it turned out happened was the aluminum got uh, warm enough to actually adhere to the electrical uh, port. And I had to kind of like break it free. So don't tape the end that goes to the RV. Just keep it the way I showed it. It's probably a good time to introduce myself. My name's Dave. This is my first ever YouTube project. I hope you liked it. I really enjoyed making it. Had a better time camping out there in the snow, testing it out. Let me know your thoughts in your comments, and I'll see you on the next one.